Although most cruise reviewers say there are five, there are strictly speaking only two cruise lines that truly have a ship within a ship, a fully self-contained world where passengers paying at least $500 per person per night for a suite are given this special entry card to a door that lets them step out of the regular cruise ship and into an exclusive VIP, very important passenger one. Once in, they don't have to leave because it's got their suite with a butler bringing them treats and drinks, a bar, lounge, restaurants, front desk with concierge to sort out any issues, a pool deck with hot tubs. Now, of course, most do leave occasionally to eat in one of the regular cruise specialty restaurants, go to shows, or perhaps head off on an excursion. But importantly, when they do, they get priority bookings, the best seats in the theater set aside for them. They're fast-tracked and escorted to the front of any line by their butler should they so wish. Now on other ships, whilst those same high fare paying suite guests have dedicated suite guest venues, they're dotted around the ship. They're not all within one space. So they have to move around the ship to get to them. But I'm gonna include them in this review and you'll see why. Now I'm Gary Bembridge and I've stayed in all five of these spaces in the last 20 months. And here's what I found to be the best, the worst, and why. I'm going to start by talking about the two that are true ship within a ship first. I'm going to start with MSC Cruises Yacht Club because this was this year's Cruise Critic Editor's Choice as the best suite complex because they felt it provides a lot of luxury for not a lot of cost versus the others. Now I agree. One key pro of the Yacht Club is they are usually the lowest price of all the options. And unlike the others, there are even some inside cabins alongside the range of suites, making it even more affordable and accessible. Facilities are also a big pro and they feel up market. The Top Sail Lounge is a popular social hub because it serves unlimited drinks and cocktails, premium tea and coffees, snacks all day, fancy butler served afternoon tea, and in the evenings, has live music. The restaurant is attractive and on most of their ships, it has stunning views over the bow. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a varied and decent sized menu, which changes daily. And it's all made in a dedicated yacht club kitchen. Personally, I found their food good, but kind of more premium cruise line main dining room level, not kind of a luxurious luxury cruise line level. The pool deck is really attractive. It's got a plunge pool, hot tub bar, and even informal dining venue where you can have breakfast and you can have lunch. The bulk of the suites are a decent size and they're comfortable. They're not as kind of memorable or fancy as some other lines that I'm gonna to come to. I found a really big pro of MSC Yacht Club is all the inclusions because the fare includes drinks package, mini bar, Wi-Fi, and access to spa facilities in the thermal suite. Of course, it has the usual things like priority check-in with a dedicated yacht club bag drop, which I really like, an uh, embarkation lounge before you board, priority lifts to get you to and from the yacht club. Now, in terms of the downsides, MSC Yacht Club is not for those seeking an adult only or even an adult focused option because MSC is definitely very family focused and in holiday times there will be many in the yacht club. But of course, on the other hand, it makes it great for families who are seeking a premium experience on a family line. The other thing I would say is MSC is a very busy, very crowded, boisterous line. There's lots of big nightly parties. And while the Yacht Club offers some respite, the Yacht Club itself is big, it's full, it's busy. And I found it was not really enough to compensate for the full on nature of the line. You know, I'm not a big party, crowds kind of high energy environment cruiser. So MSC kind of wasn't for me. So that kind of made the Yacht Club less so. The other true ship within a ship is Norwegian Cruise Lines, The Haven. Personally, I found this even more upmarket in feel than the Yacht Club especially because it's evolved from the haven in ships like Breakaway and Encore, which was really focused around a central courtyard, to the newer Prima class ships with big outside decks at the rear of the ship. It really feels luxurious and plush, and it's a very large space. And that's also a negative from people who aren't in the haven because they feel it's starting to take up too much of the ship. The bar, lounge, restaurant, concierge desk area, deck with bar, plunge pool, hot tubs, sauna, steam room. They're all really, really stylish. Touches like this dedicated elevators to get you to and from the Haven. This kind of adds to that luxurious experience. Another pro is the suites are stunning. So overall, I found it way more luxurious in feel and design than the Yacht Club. There are those some really big cons. Prices can be high, definitely as much as going on an ultra luxury cruise line in peak periods especially, but with less inclusions. 
unless you get the free at sea package, which is often included as a promotion, you're going to need to buy a drinks package. You have to pay for Wi-Fi. And on top of the daily auto added gratuities, the butler then expects tips on top of that because they're not included in those add on gratuities. I also found the restaurant menus, unlike the Yacht Club, rather disappointing. There's a very limited choice and they do not change. It's the same menu every day. So you can pretty much work your way through the entire menu on a cruise. The main dining rooms have bigger and way more interesting menus, actually. Although some tell me it varies by class of ship, but certainly when I was on the Viva, there was no included tea and coffee or snacks in the lounge, no live music at night. So with no included drinks either, while the lounge is really attractive, it did not act and become a social hub to meet and chat and meet people like it is on the Yacht Club. The Haven guests also have to pay, by the way, for all the added activities around the ship, you know, the go-karts, crazy golf, and so on. That's not included as part of the package. Of course, to enjoy the Haven, like MSC, you do need to like what Norwegian offers in this case, in terms of its entertainment, its onboard experience, the size of the ship and the various add-ons. It's not as family focused as MSC, but it's very popular with families. And so again, don't think of this as an adult only or focused space if you are seeking that. It can be at times, but not always. But again, it makes it a great choice for families seeking that more premium experience within a Norwegian ship because they then have the ability to tap into the, all the choice of dining, the bars, the entertainment, and so on. Now, I want to, do want to talk about those lines that don't have true ships within a ship, but come close because they have many of the same exclusive dedicated facilities, even though they are scattered around the ship. I want to talk first about Royal Caribbean and their Royal Suite class. Now, on the plus side to these, they do have many exclusive access facilities. The key one is Coastal Kitchen and the Suite Lounge and Bar area which on many ships overlooks the busy bustling pool deck. The Coastal Kitchen is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner and has a pretty good menu which does change daily. The food was fine, but I felt the regular main dining room standard was the same. It wasn't really a luxury line feel, but of course the Coastal Kitchen is much less busy, it's much less rush. Capacity though is limited and reservations are required. So unlike the Yacht Club or the Haven, you do have to make reservations to go there. The lounge and the bar are a comfortable space that can be hard to get seats at times. Uh, because drinks aren't included in the fare except for the highest grades, they do though have a nightly happy hour from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. where they have snacks and complimentary drinks and it's really popular and it's a nice touch. The concierges are in the lounge and unlike the Yacht Club and the Haven, they actually email about a week before the cruise to see if they can help you know, make dining reservations, show reservations or any other help. So that's a good Pro. There is a suite only deck with a bar but no pool or hot tub. I actually found it a very noisy area, you know, for on, the, on the Symphony of the Seas for example, it overlooks that busy pool deck and you then have to leave the pool deck if you want to go for a swim. Only the very top grades get a butler, but there is, you know, priority embarkation, disembarkation, getting off in port, reserved seating in the, in the show for all the suites, that is, same kind of perks. So this leads me now to one of the downsides because the perks do vary a lot based on the type of suite. So for example, those in the C grade suites only get some access to the coastal kitchen for dinner. Sky grade that I've booked a couple of times, you get one Wi-Fi connection, you get coastal kitchen for all the meals. But star, they get a butler called the Royal Genie, they get all special dining, they get a drinks package, gratuities, way better seats in the theater and so on. So there's real difference between the suite perks. Having the spaces dotted around the ship is a downside because it takes you know, some moving around these big ships to access and use them. Often you have to wait for busy lifts, so it's not a, that cohesive. Like with all the others, again, it's not an alternative to a small luxury ship experience because you need to like big, busy ships with lots going on, lots of families, lots of teens, all sorts of attractions, big shows. And again, like all of these, how adult or family filled these sweet areas on Royal Caribbean will be depends a lot on the time of the year. Now, all these ship within a ship that I've spoken about so far have been on those big resort lines, but they also feature on two of the lines that the industry classifies as premium lines, lines which include Honda America, Princess, Virgin Voyages, and these other two. The first of those is Celebrity Cruises with The Retreat. In terms of the pros, 
Celebrity Cruises Retreat feels even more classy and even more sophisticated than all of those that I've spoken about so far, that they do actually cost quite a bit more. You're comparing an entry-level suite to the others, you're paying for the retreat often about $700 per person per day versus the circa $500 on the other. I find the venues included within the retreat stunning, especially on the edge-class ships where they've been built from scratch versus being retrofitted on the other classes. For me, the highlight is the Lumini restaurant, which does have food from a dedicated kitchen that is definitely way more elevated and more sophisticated than you get in the main dining room. And it it's comes closest to a luxury cruise line style. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner most days. Now on the edge class ships, the large and stylish uh, retreat lounge, you know, with concierge has drinks, snacks, afternoon tea, it has an outside space, and then you head up a staircase to a decent sized deck, which has a bar, informal dining venue, plunge pool, and hot tub. Lots of comfy spaces to lounge about, but it does get kind of busy. And during vacation time, I did find, I do find that the kids and families can kind of take over the pool a bit. It can get a little bit kind of crazy up there. But the fair, uh, by the way, does include premium drinks package, premium Wi-Fi, and the higher grades get included specialty dining and a dedicated butler. The lower grades now just get access to more kind of a butler style of service, sort of like a pool of butlers, if you like. So what are the cons of the retreat beyond the price? Now, one of the cons is the retreat differs dramatically based on the class of ships. So the edge class, edge, apex, beyond, and ascent have the most kind of cohesive retreat experience, though the restaurant is not within the overall space. On the other ships, the facilities are spread out across the ship and take some getting to get to. Celebrity also seems to be reducing the perks that they offer in the retreat. They took gratuities out, they've cut the included onboard credit from the retreat package, you know, they've removed butlers for all of the sweet grades. So there's a sense of kind of cutting back, dialing back on the experience. The other premium line offering suite facilities close to a ship within a ship is Cunard with their grills, Queen Grill and Princess Grill. They have a dedicated Queen School restaurant for those in suites and the Princess Grill restaurant for those in mini suites. Even though Cunard has a reputation for being the most class-based ship, it is one of all of these that I'm talking about that actually has the fewest and certainly the least extensive uh, of all of the facilities compared to the others. The main pro about going Cunard Grills is the dining experience. This is where they definitely place the most focus. I would say the restaurants do offer some of the best food at sea, certainly within the premium category, and definitely even better than on Celebrity Retreats Lumini, in my view. There are huge menu options, particularly in Queen's Grill, where you can even go off menu if you want. You can have caviar for dinner uh, as often as you want. The other big difference to all the others is that in both Queen's Grill and Princess Grill, while it's open seated dining, you still get an allocated table for all your meals and you have the same serving staff. So you can build a really strong rapport with them. They get to know you well and they definitely will tailor your experience. They do have a lounge with a bar and they do have a deck, but they're not particularly large or particularly impressive or particularly attractive. The decks have no pools and only on Queen Mary 2 does it actually even have a hot tub. Now in terms of cons, there are very few inclusions or added perks with things like drinks, Wi-Fi, gratuities, they're all extra. In Queen's Grill, you do though get your mini bar stocked with two kinds of alcohol, which is included within the fare. Beyond the dining, the perks and the facilities, in my view anyway, are not at the scale of those other lines that I've covered. It's much lower key and it really is very much more focused about the dining experience and of course the bigger cabins. So which from these five is the best and which is the worst. As there are only two true ship within the ships, I would say that while the best of those two overall for style is Norwegian Haven, the best value, particularly if you're traveling with your family, is the Yacht Club. They also, by the way, win on the overall experience of the lounge and the restaurant and again, the number of inclusions. So they kind of win between those two. Now, once you take in all the other lines who have almost ship within the ships, while the Yacht Club definitely stands up for the value, personally, I think the retreat is the most luxurious and the closest to a luxury line experience. And since that's what these are trying to create for me, 
That, I feel, is the best of the five. The worst of them, well, there's not a terrible one, but overall in the rankings, I would actually put Royal Caribbean at the bottom because I think it lacks the real elevation and attention to detail that the others have. You know, there's no one big standout feature as handy as all their facilities are. Now, I know many of you will have a view and you may disagree with some of these, so do leave a comment and let me know what you think and why. But while you consider that, why not join me over in this playlist where I'm gonna show you each of these ship within a ships in more detail. See you over there.